Welcome to another edition of Community Matters. I'm Jim Cameron, host of this program and program director of Darien TV 79. And you, as our ever faithful viewer, knows that Community Matters is the show where we interview folks in the Darien community about what makes this such a great place to live uh, and hopefully live for a while, but welcome newcomers as well, too, because we're talking today about the Darien real estate market. And uh, our return guest, Bruce Baker, has invited two of his colleagues, uh, Kate Bates and uh, Janine Tinkin. Uh, Janine is with Houlihan Lawrence. Kate Bates is with Compass CT. And Bruce Baker comes with, with William Pitt Sotheby. Uh, I welcome all of you to the program and really thank you for giving up part of your, your busy day to uh, go through this exercise. Thanks thank for having you. us. So, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about your experience, uh, how long you've been in town, what what uh, what got you into real estate. Um, Janine, why don't you go first? Okay. So I have lived in Darien with my husband and two kids for 29 years. Um, I was born and raised in New Canaan, so this was like coming home to me. Um, my first job right out of college was in New York City. So I was a broker, different kind of broker, a paper broker, same similar businesses, business model, um, but have been in real estate for 19 years now here at Houlihan Lawrence. And Kate, what's your background? Um, so hello, I live in Darien as well now for 20 years with my children and family raised everyone here in Darien. Um, my background is finance. I traded oil commodities uh, for three different banks uh, prior to, believe it or not, 9-11 um, happening right at my marriage. And uh, we moved up to Old Greenwich. And then we ended up in this beautiful little town of Darien. So um, I've been here with Janine. Actually, we started yeah, or I started better. after her a little after you. You were ahead of me for sure. Um so we started at Kelly, then Houlihan, and then I ended up at Compass. Wonderful. And Bruce, uh, tell us about your background as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I uh, moved to Darien with my wife in 1982. Don't add that up. <laughs> and uh, I have three daughters. Um, they are all married. I have six grandchildren now. Uh, my background, um, I was very fortunate to work with Ralph Lauren for 25 years and establish a license with him, separate business. And um, we sold that after 15 years to a public company. And then um, my wife was like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm having fun. She said, no, you're not. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I had owned several homes in town over those over all those years from, you know, starter home up. And so I said, oh, sell real estate. That'd be fun. So went around and, and had fun interviewing with different brokerages. They're all great. Picked the one I picked and started selling in about, uh, I guess it was 2006. So I've been doing this 18 years. Um, I have to say this, I can't help myself. I, I am so excited to have these two ladies on this program. I've only done it once, as you know, Jim, but you know, this is an interesting, and it, I think this is germane to your, you know, your commentary. Um, you know, I, I had no idea what I was getting into in real estate, you know, um, and you build relationships over time. And, you know, you, I mean, there are over 300 registered real estate agents in Darien. I mean, that's crazy, right? Because yeah. in a great year, you'll sell a little more than 300 properties for all of town, everybody, right? And, you know, these two agents and myself are, you know, we, we can trade as many as 25 a year, you know, somewhere like that, just in town. So, so you really get to know the people that, you know, you, you, you talk to and, and these are great ladies. They're, we've done a lot of deals together and just for fun, Kate, which you don't know. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> I, I added up our volume yeah. together. Um, since we all started from when we first sold our first property um, to through today. And the three of us combined have sold $932 million of Darien real estate. Wow. Which, 
which wow. is really unbe- unbelievable. That's super cool. <laughs> and we love what we yeah. do. So apparently so. Apparently so. So uh we really want to talk about what the market looks like. And we're recording this show mid-March. Uh so we're kind of coming into your busy season, is that right? Uh, give give us an overall sense of how the real estate market is is looking as we're coming into spring and summer of 2024. Uh, Kate, do you want to go first this time? Um, sure. Um, well, I feel like we're coming in as as uh, as we have for the past couple of years with a lot of pent up demand, um, and unfortunately, in our small town. You know, it's very different nationwide. I think people are doing a little bit better, but because of low inventory, it's tougher here. Obviously, um, the five Ds keep the market moving, which are, if our audience doesn't know, it's diamonds, diapers, divorce, downsizing, and death. I'll add disaster. (laughs) As like a those never writer. change those never change yeah but now it's like this disaster added so i would say six um because we moved up um to connecticut because of 9 11 and now a lot of these young families finance-based families who um you know had that great little one bedroom that was perfect until more diapers and they needed to move up but now because unfortunately our sellers really just don't have anywhere to go. Um, they're, you know, it's one multiple bid after the other. So I think disaster with COVID really pushed our market. And now, as we all know, Bruce and Janine are the best. I mean, they're, I mean, I couldn't be in better company. Um, but this new article that we all read from Bloomberg oh, yeah. calling us yeah. the mini, the mini Greenwich has really pushed people even more towards Darien, which kind of was like this little secret town. And now it's become really fashionable and, you know, obviously a commuter's dream. So that's Janine, what is it, is it a seller's market? Oh, it's absolutely a seller's market. Um, our inventory, as Kate had mentioned already, you know, supply and demand and our supply is very low. Um, I feel bad for these some of these buyers because you know they've been on the sidelines here. They're waiting to jump in. But when you get a house that comes on and you get 19 offers, only one person gets the house. So it's a tough market for buyers, but don't give up. Um, I think we're going back to more pre-pandemic cycles, so to speak. Our biggest markets historically before the pandemic where April and May were our biggest selling months. And I think we're kind of, I think we're going right into that. The weather's getting better. That's our spring market, so to speak. Even though spring, you know, people are gearing up, spring really starts in February, March, and we're seeing that already. Houses come on, you know, within a couple of days, they're off the market, you know, multiple bids or, you know, I think, but I do think we're gearing up to see more inventory, not the inventory we need to for the buyers. Um, again, our buyer supply and demand is 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 very skewed right now. So great and, time to sell your house. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. If if you're if you're viewing this program and thinking about selling, we'll give you some advice on how to uh, get the best price. Although it sounds like uh, it's a bidding war out there. Bruce, how important are uh, uh, somewhat lowering mortgage rates to uh, your business right now? Is that making it more affordable for folks to to buy these houses? Well, mortgage rates are really are having an impact on people that are excited to sell. They say, well, I can, if I sell, this would be great. Um, look at you know, look what my neighbor made. <laughs> um, but at the same time, a lot of these people have low interest rates. They're locked in at like, you know, two, 3%. So what we're hoping, we are hoping, is that, you know, interest rates now, which are high to, you know, because as average price goes up, you know, you're borrowing more and it's a much bigger hit uh, for your monthly mortgage. If they start coming down um, significantly or, you know, just indicate they're coming down, that's going to free up even more inventory, I think. And at the same time, we'll allow more buyers to feel more aggressive about what they're, you know, what they're capable of buying. And just to give you some perspective, uh, Janine and Kate um, led to it. There are 26 properties on the market in Darien, Connecticut right now. And 
ladies, what would their, you know, what would there normally be around this time in a, in, you know, a, a normal 2017 or 16, right? Like over a hundred, like hundred and right around hundred and fifty. Yeah. Now yeah. Janine says, you know, 18 multiple offers. That's gives you a feel of, of, you know, where this demand factor is, which is different between the different price segments, of course, but, it, but I love that she said, don't, don't give up, you know, yeah. because the town is worth it. Right. I mean, we all know that that's why we right. sell here. Right. Um, you're, buying, you're buying the town, not just the property. Right. We yeah. always say that. Yeah. And well, it's easy to sell Darian. Yeah. I want to, I want to talk about why people want to come to Darian, but our guests today on community matters are Kate Bates, Bruce Baker, and Janine Kinkin, who are the three hottest real estate agents in town. Um, <laughs> what, what is it that attracts people to Darien? Uh, aside from, oh, it's the new Greenwich. I don't think that's really no. accurate. I don't want to live in the new Greenwich. I didn't want to live in the old Greenwich. Uh, <laughs> I've been living here for 32 years, too. So um, what is it that attracts people to Darien? Is it the schools? Is it the trains? Uh, is it the new developments? Is it the quality of life, the country clubs, the beaches, all the above? <laughs> what else do you want? All the above. It is all the above, but I think, I think first and foremost, it's the schools. I think we have a great school system. I think people appreciate that. As Kate pointed out, people coming from the city, um, you know, you have one or two kids, you're outgrowing your New York City apartment. This is a much easier life in Darien with kids. You know, the school systems are great. We have so many activities for them. It's just, it's an, it's an easier, calmer life than being in New York City. Yeah, especially to, to Janine's point, especially when at, the, at there's a certain point in New York City, and I'm from New York, I'm from Westchester. My mother was a realtor there. And the drive really now is that the private schools in New York City have gone bonkers. Yeah. It is super difficult to uh, yeah. actually get involved in the process of getting into a private school in Manhattan. So when they see that our kids are going to the same colleges after going through a Darien public school journey, that those kids who are going to Horace Mann or, you know, all these great schools in New York, but it's public and it's without all of the interviews and the incredible amount of money. So I think that they, they probably package that in, to the price of their house and the, mm -hmm. and the stress list, you know, journey that you have in Darien. And, and I think Bruce, back, uh, back the taxes back. are pretty low in Darien as compared yeah. to other places too. Right. Jim, yeah. that was going to be my second comment is that I think be, be first and foremost is schools, but second are the taxes. Um, I think in the last couple of years since COVID I've sold more houses to Westchester based families that have actually left Westchester they wanted to be close to Manhattan, but again, they're not going into the city five days a week. So they can go a little further from the city. You, you may be commuting three days a week. So, but they really are taking advantage of our taxes. Um, and I think that's and another a good, action. another good um, back to schools for a sec. Cause that's so important. What I, what I tell clients and, is that, you know, the way the school system is structured, because this is a community, right? I mean, that's the other big factor. We're, we're 21,000 people. We're not like, you know, 70,000 like Greenwich. Greenwich is a city, right? So, but the way the schools are structured, we have five or six middle schools. What do we have five ladies? Five, five elementary. Five but elementary. they're all, mil they're all um, neighborhood. So the kids get to know who they're going to school with, right? At the bus, at the whatever. And then that feeds into one middle school where the community comes together and it's an amazing middle school, if you see it. All these schools are, you know, state of the art, up to date, high ranked, you know, in terms of education. So in the middle school, everybody comes together and you really feel the community aspect, you know, because maybe you've seen these people, but you never met them. And it's not so big that, that you can you can be not, you don't have to be, no, no one know, doesn't know everybody's business, right? I mean, it's big enough that that's not a problem. <laughs> Unless you really want to know other people's business. Um, and then the high school, as you know, is, you know, literally state of the art. Tear down in what year? 2010? Was it has it? to be 20 years ago now. It was but being it, it's, moved you know, here. It, Well, to your point about taxes, it was a $90 million build from scratch. 
and the taxes didn't move. That's pretty freaking amazing, right? That's that's good fiscal control of our town government. So yeah, we have a we have rate a, is actually coming down this year, which is right. incredibly well budgeted. The people who are budgeting are incredible in our town. Uh, the board of finance, uh, you know, as you said, this is a town filled with finance people. And the people that lend their expertise to serve on the board of finance or the board of education uh, really benefit the town. Uh, it's going to be a tough budget year, but uh, our, compared to the other neighboring towns, our comps, our comp towns, not properties, uh, we're still cheap by comparison. $85 million has just bought us Great <laughs> Island. Um, Which is beautiful. Now, it's Amazing. beautiful, but do you get to go down there and show that to people? Uh, sure. It's supposed to be only pedestrians that are getting access now, or do you have some sort of special dispensation to be able to drive around and show people that? No, we can't drive no. into it. It's, no. it's strictly <laughs> for walking, um, yeah. but it, it is a nice feature, and I think you know people are appreciating it. And you can already see at Pear Tree Point, the cars, people are parking their cars on these nice days and just taking a walk down there. And it's been terrific. I think it's a great asset for us. We and that, yeah, that goes to your point that we are so lucky to have these incredible finance people working in our Board of Ed and, and all over our Darien government. I mean, they are, they are some of the smartest people out there. And that was such a well-executed purchase that many other towns would not have done. You know, they would have sold it. And we actually bought it. I think that goes to everything that this town is about. It's really about our our people that live here and what's important to them and their lifestyle. And, and I'm just, I'm so proud of the town for making such a smart purchase. Uh, I want to talk about the inventory issues because you say there are not enough properties to meet the demand, but we do have new developments in town. Darian Commons has opened up near Neroden Heights. Uh, the, the Corbin district is well underway in construction. And uh, we're also going to have the the new Palmer's uh, property next to uh, Darian Commons. Those are rental properties, but is is that a way to get a toll hold into Darian? Are people choosing to move there and rent for a year and then kind of figure out where they want to buy a house? I'll jump on, well, on this one. Go. I would. Sorry, Kate. Go, <laughs> go. Go? No, uh, no, go. I would not necessarily. I think that what that does is it allows people that are thinking about selling their house, at least it has been in my experience. I have downsizers, so to speak, that say, hey, I'd love to sell my house, Janine, but I don't know where to go. So, and they want to, they want to capitalize on this strong seller's market. So in turn, we do, we put their house on the market, we get them a great price, and then they're moving to like a Corbin district and renting an apartment for a year or two. Maybe they don't want to leave the area yet. You know, Florida has been hot and a lot of people that are really looking to downsize have not been able to do that either. But this is kind of like a placeholder for a year yeah. or two, right? I don't exactly. know if that's your experience too, Kate or Bruce. Yeah, well, I will just, I'll give you a personal experience. My parents live in Darien. Actually, yeah. Janine and I did the deal together <laughs> 10 years ago. Of course. And don't be jealous, Bruce. <laughs> but we did the deal together and- you know, in two years, they're waiting for phase two of David Genovese's, um, you know, Corbin mm. district, who's it's been just amazing. And they're waiting. They're like waiting with bated breath to sell their house, which will sell really well and to move in there. And I think the term that David is using is the chasers. And I was like, what does that mean? And he said, it's yeah. the it's the grandparents chasing the little toddlers that they're helping the parents with. They're babysitting. So the, yeah. those parents are called the chasers, which I think is cute. But I think that's what's going to fill up a lot of the Corbin district. Wow. And we were okay. at a meeting. Um, yeah, ahead, we were at a meeting. We were at a meeting the, uh, last week. Was it last week? Yeah. Um, the three of us were certainly there. And it was the three developers kind of presenting what's going on. Right which is really cool, right? Because, yeah. you know, they're, they're all different, you know, and like we know it's really fun to watch because they put a lot of money on the line, you know, for in this. And I think that Darien Commons is probably 
I know that for me, there's a lot of kids that have, when I say kids, you know, young adults that have come up from the city that have residents there. The rents are a little cheaper than, you know, and there are more of them um, as a placeholder, you know, to be here so they can jump on something. Um, but it's like they, 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 they looked at, they had, there was this moment where the developer for uh, Darian Commons said, you know, we, we're, we're at 100% occupancy. And the other two developers looked at him like he had like, that never happens, I guess, right. Right. in that business. They were like, what? That's like really crazy. So, yeah, we're very lucky to have uh, that there. Um, and those properties and Bruce, are not Bruce, cheap Wasn't either, it kind right? of interesting that the people, like the realtors that were invited to this meeting were actually – they were they were asked to be brutally honest about how <laughs> how they really liked Darian oh. Commons and the incredible um, the guy from Federal who was amazing. Yeah. Um, he said, "Please be brutally honest." Like who? What? What developer says that? Yeah. And, yeah. and guess what? Everyone was like, "I think the biggest issue, which I think says everything about Darian, is." Can you put more greenery in? Can we get more landscaping? Mm -hmm. There's too much cement. And it was like, that was like the biggest issue, which leads you to believe the lifestyle you're buying here in Darien is all about, all of that lifestyle is so important to our young people, but they also want all these cool restaurants and, you know, all these fun places. Um, but I just thought that was really funny that that's, that was like the main that's what issue. They wanted. <laughs> Janine, outdoor space. Too. I was like, what? outdoor space, outdoor we space, are, it was beautiful. We're talking about the, uh, the Darien <laughs> real estate market as we enter the busy spring and uh, summer season, Janine Tinkin, uh, Bruce Baker and uh, Kate Bates joining us today from uh, three of the uh, biggest uh, realtor agencies in, in Darien. Uh, okay. Let's get to the, to the meat of the, the, the meeting, which is, People are sitting here wondering, okay, I think I want to sell my house. Uh, I'm going to move wherever. Um, what do I need to do? What's the first thing you need to do if, you, if you're if you thinking of, of selling your house? I say be really serious about interviewing agents. Uh, and because we have found, because you know, we're fortunate. We're all, the three of us are very fortunate. I mean, because of what we do and, and how we've been able to do so much of it, that it it's not what people think of like, we put my house on the market. You know, Harry sold his for that. We, June sold hers for that. <laughs> it's, it's like, it is much more, and I'm not just tooting our horn. Again, every agent in this town is important, whether you're on the listing side or the buy side, um, you know, and everyone has a, but God, it's really important to find the right agent. And a lot of people say, oh, I'll sell it myself. And, and, you know, we respect that we're, we're fine, but it's such an intense, it, it, it's, it, it's business. It's, <laughs> it's development, it's, you know, staging, it's, it, it, that product is our product. I mean, I try to get people away from being, you know, I'm going to sell my house. It's a, you know, you, you got to let go it's here. Emotional. You got to let go. It's a product. And we, the three of us want that product to be the best on the shelf so that our clients, that, that client gets the best value because that's what makes everybody happy, right? That's what mm -hmm. we do. But the, the mm -hmm. process of doing that is like, no one has a, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's like, I mean, there's someone like 242 different functions that we do or something. <laughs> well, I have to say too, for, for Bruce, um, I mean, I learned so much from both Bruce and Janine. So if you don't list with them, call me. But Bruce, <laughs> <laughs> I love them so much, but Bruce, I learned from Bruce early on in my career that he is there early fluffing the pillow. <laughs> yes. And Janine would tell yeah. you this. Yeah. We literally have a, um, a, a toilet cleaner in one hand. We're making <laughs> beds. We're, we're doing okay, laundry. That's enough. Thank taking you the very garbage much. out. That is what we do. And that's how you learn to be the best. You know that you have to do it all. And it really is relationships. Like it's not just your relationship with your 
with your client or your seller, but it's the relationships that you have with the agent. Because if I'm selling a house or, or my buyer's coming to a house and I see Janine or Bruce's name, I'm like, oh, this is great. I can't wait to work with them. And hopefully they can't wait to work yeah. with me. And that's the relationship that gives you the edge as a buyer. So it's so important not to hire someone who's doing an Instagram reel and hasn't sold anything. So it's very important to really, I agree 100% with Bruce. I think Janine would agree. You yeah. really have to do your homework on your listing agent, see what they've sold, see how their clients like or love them. They should love them. It's an emotional journey. And, you know, do your homework. So Janine, if if there are so many demands for properties, it should be super easy. What well, first of well, all, what not. do I need an agent for? <laughs> Why can't I no. do a for sale by owner, a FISBO? Uh, well, these are big numbers, should, Jim. No, you yeah, know, I, I know, you, but what what do I what do I what am I doing when I do when I interview an agent? What am I asking? Well, you you're asking for what what's your strategy? And I think First and foremost, and I think you guys will agree, pricing your house correctly is number one. You can't, you still, you shouldn't overprice a house because historically, and even this year, there's been some reductions in prices that have come on too high. Um, you know, when I say luxury or high end, our house is over 4 million. Those are sitting on the market a little bit longer. I don't want to cloud everybody's, you know, thoughts here that everything that comes on goes off in a week. That's not true. But, um, but I think it's really important to price your homes right and to get them ready. Like I say market ready. Like take the time and take the advice of Bruce or Kate or myself and do the work that we want you to do before you go live on an MLS, before you get the buyers in. Because first impressions are huge. So what are you going to tell them to do? Paint the outside? Uh mow the grass, put in some new shrubbery, a <laughs> couple of Adirondack chairs on curb the front appeal, lawn. Curb appeal. The, it definitely, the lawn, it needs to be pristine. You know, the, the house needs to be clean. I don't know if it, need, if it needs paint, we're going to tell you paint and paint's not expensive. So paint's your best friend. It is your best friend. <laughs> it's your for best. sure. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's you it's interesting. With a paintbrush as well as the toilet bowl. Like yeah, sure. But <laughs> you it, don't you know, want me to it, paint. I'm not a good painter. It, it's interesting, Jim, because, uh, you know, the ladies will agree with me. The, the thing we're looking for as fast as possible from our clients is to let them know they can trust us, you know, and because we do know what we're doing. And yet at the same time, we need to be respectful of where their heads are. Right. So it's, it's a process, not an event, you know, to get it's great that you have you know, all these sales behind you and, you know, you can show your stats and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's as Kate said, it's that relationship with that seller that you want them to understand and respect what we know how to do. So we get to do all the things that we need to do. Um, and because of, you're dealing with someone's personal space, you have to have a certain um, gift that, that the three of us and many other agents have of being able to communicate with them such that they let go, you know, um, and, right, and then you have, and then you have, you know, and, and one other thing I want to say, like, we're really, we obviously get it, but, but I, we get together really well, but I don't want to mislead any of the, your viewers when we're in negotiations with each other, <laughs> it can be really difficult, <laughs> but in a good Not way. Personal, just business, right? It's great. It's great. So it's like we're sitting here. Oh yeah, Kate, Janine, and la la. la. And, and like sometimes if I get a if I have a buyer and it's Janine's and I and she knows that they want to know the 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 seller wants to know that they also have an agent that's going to close a deal. Right. You you right. wouldn't believe how many deals in this crazy market everybody thinks everything's just we like I said don't they fall out they don't happen because because there's so much emotion involved there's so many people involved you know and and if the agents don't really keep it you know tight and keep it together it doesn't happen you know so 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 having you know someone who you know is gonna get the deal closed is, is important when you're a listing agent, if you're, you know, whoever's bringing the buyer. How do you have that difficult conversation with people 
that their house is probably better suited to be torn down <laughs> uh, as opposed to sold. I mean, it's my house. I've lived there. I've taken care of it. You're telling me now it's going to be demolished? It's hard. That's a hard conversation. Um, uh, rarely do we have those conversations because yeah. we often sell the house with the lot. So you're buying the lot and there's a house on it. And I've actually had builders. So sometimes, as Janine and Bruce know, we can do some off market things. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that here. But if it's so personal and maybe there's a sickness involved and maybe people are going into a nursing home or the family is really having a hard time, as um, like Bruce and Janine, uh, you know, I can reach out to them. They can reach out to me and say, hey, do you have a builder or somebody who can make this a little easier, you know, and we are, you know, it, we're a good group. Like, I feel like we are so, um, we are constantly dealing with emotional clients. It could be anything. Divorces right. are very yeah. emotional. So you're working with two people separately. Um, but when you're putting your parents, you know, taking them out of a house, the simplest, easiest deal is the best. And I, uh, and, to, and to that point, I just sold something where my builder said, you can leave the food in the refrigerator and the clothes in the closet. Now take will care of it. it. Yeah. And that's very important. And you only get that with agents, like really great agents. You um, also wow. can, um, yeah. I know Janine's done this a lot too, is it, because it is difficult. The, the, the thing that I do is, you got to shift without you want to shift it from the emotion to the business if that's what they want. Right. So what I've done is when, you know, you're sitting, you're listening to their stories, which are unbelievable. You learn more about people and things. It's awesome. And when you ask them what their priority is, nine out of 10 times, they'll say either I want to get the most money that I can because I need it for this or that or this. You know, and that helps you shift that conversation to the best way you're going to do this is by either selling the land or what it, what is, how do you do that? And then we've also found that where there are a lot of properties that developers are just going, <laughs> they can't wait because they know it's a teardown, you know, and, and, and what we do is we say, you know what, it's not a teardown because we fix it up because they're going to get a lot more money for that house. Right. to an end user than they are for a builder because I love builders, but what are they looking for? All they care about is the price of the land, you know? So that's, it, it's really interesting. We're talking about the uh, Darien real estate market with three uh, of the hottest uh, real estate agents in town. Janine Tinkin, Bruce Baker, and Kate Bates, our guest today on uh, Community Matters. Okay, so I've decided uh, to sell my house and I've chosen one of you to be my listing agent. Uh, you know, and I've been on Trulia and these these property sites and I've looked at my house and all my neighbors' houses and I've got a number in mind because the Trulia or these other sites have told me my house is worth X. Is it worth that amount is it worth more how do you come up with uh, a potential selling price don't all answer at once i know we're, sorry we're um, just I'm, we're just being, we can all answer we're being just all for ideas. <laughs> i think no, you have to respectful. go back and and i think you have to go back i'll jump in on this one yes. i think you have to go back you know the last six months the most recent sales that would be comparable to the house you're trying to list or about to list and show them what, you know, a list price and, an, and, a, and where the house actually traded. And that's a good indicator for them. Now, there may not be an exact, but you can kind of, you know, every, every attribute of a house, everybody's a little bit different. But I think that gives them a range. And again, I always say, we'll fine tune it the second we go on the MLS. If there's, you know, five other houses that you compete with, well, then we're going to tighten our pencil a little bit. And you want to be the best house in that price range where again, people walk in and feel the value and that drives the price up versus overpricing a house, which you can still do in this market. And then having to take a price reduction, which we've now started to see, not just in Darien and New Canaan. New Canaan has more inventory, by the way, than Darien. So people coming from the city, you know, if they're, if they're jumping on houses in Darien and not getting them, they may be open to living in New Canaan too. They're looking at various towns. 
So you have to keep an eye on everybody else's inventory as well. well you said if there are 18 bids for a house, uh, should I start low and expect people are going to uh, offer me more than I'm asking for the property? But not too low. There's a there's a strategy that, that's a very interesting question because how do I say this? There are a lot of agents would love to have listings. Okay, I mean they'd love to have listings. So and what does the seller want? The seller wants the highest price. So you know maybe the agent goes in. Oh, I can get wah, you know for 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 your your property. And, you know, the, 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 buy, the seller really wants to hear that, right? So they get that number in mind. Dangerous. So what we do, I, I think the three of us are pretty good at this because we track this, is you first have to know who your customer is, you know, who, mm -hmm. who, your, who your seller is and how they operate. And so you're accommodating them. But nothing is, nothing is better than the facts, to Janine's point. But you mm -hmm. need to let them know that they're seeing everything. You know, like if I if I say, what do I, what do you think your house is worth? And they say, well, Jimmy sold it for that. And I think, you know, million five. And you're like, whoa, that's like, that's high. Um, so then you can show them what, you know, you literally say, let me show you everything that sold within this time frame at a million five. And it's not brain surgery. I mean, a, they see what the work's involved because the way you show these houses are being, they're, they're on the market or they've been sold and they're looking like, they're looking like gems, yeah. you know? So it's not, it's a, again, it's a process, you know, they'll, it's not nine out of 10 times. They'll, again, it's that trust factor, right? But in terms of what you said is pricing, I'll be very quick because I don't talk too much is that this last market, what I watched is agents like us, we're like, okay, just because it's selling up here doesn't mean that's what you do, all right? And I was watching that happen, whereas houses, before we knew what was going on and all the craziness, houses were priced here, they trade up here, you know? The trick was to find out where the here is to create the there, not to go to the there to find out that you were out of whack, you know? So what, what's that tipping point? And, and that was an art form because, you know, you, you, you really, I saw a lot of agents because the client would say, well, that's how sold for that. So why don't we put it on at that? And yeah. buyers aren't done. That's not the strategy. Yeah. No. And just like Janine just said, your listing agent, if you're presenting, should have a proven strategy that they use for every house. And then what Bruce said, it's about trust. If you trust your agent, listen, this is what we do. This is our job. We don't go to your job and tell you what to do because you're a specialist at it. This is what we do. If you trust us and listen to mm -hmm. us, we are going to knock it out of the park for you because we already know how much, how many people are out there for this house. But we also have to be a little aggressive with pricing. And as Janine, I think, said, the worst possible thing to happen to your listing is a price reduction in this yeah. kind of market. And that is what happens with a lot of new young agents where they just are happy to get the listing. So they'll say here, oh, you want two five for your one eight house? Okay, let's price it at two five. If, if I came on that same interview, same with Bruce and Janine, yeah. we would say, wait, 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 there's a strategy here to get you what you want, but you have to drill down on the price. It's so impressive. Absolutely. Does a house uh, have potential to sell faster if it is occupied or empty? Well, it depends on if your if your seller will be open to showing it consistently. Um, if they won't, then it will take longer to sell because you won't be able to get that immediate four days straight of showings. Right. So, so as as I think both Bruce and Janine would agree that if you stage it and it's vacant, it gives us staging? a lot more flexibility. That they're not living there. Is. Oh, when we bring in a company and, um, you know, the seller and however you want to work the deal, they, and Bruce is the genius with this, yeah. of course. I think we, we all learned from Bruce. We I did mean, learn from Bruce. Right? We did. I didn't want to speak for you. No, but yeah, we did learn yeah, from Bruce. You got to stage that baby. So staging is 
when you bring in beautiful, simple furniture that people can walk in because, you know, the first impression is so important when they walk in, it's very neutral, but light and simple, and they can picture themselves there as opposed to someone else's home that they're walking into. And it feels very heavy because someone else's pictures are up and their couch that they've had for 25 years that they all love <laughs> is there. And it's a little beat up and the dog's been on it for a while. Uh, another thing, dogs, if you, if we can get rid of the dog for a few days <laughs> or cats, yeah. that's yeah. great too. So I would say vacant and staged because small. So it, when a house is empty, it looks smaller. Yeah. So you definitely want to put some furniture. You definitely, in you definitely need furniture. Empty houses are cold and they appear smaller than they actually are. So and a lot of a lot know, of times we is, have the opportunity. To, a lot of times we have the opportunity if um, to change. You know, a, a a seller has things in a certain room for a certain reason. Well, we're we are trained in knowing what the value of each room. What what are the important rooms? What do they have? What do they not have? What's the trend? You know, what, what are they? And, and we can, if, if it's vacant, we can transform a room that was something else into something else. That's more significant is more what the buyer wants. What is the buy? Who is the buyer, right? Who is the buyer? Is it, you know, the, the best stories are when, you know, you have someone who doesn't get this at all, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, and you just, and, and you really respect them for their, you know, they, I, I've had that couch for 15 years. You know what I paid for that couch? You know, you know where I bought that couch? That is a, that is a very expensive couch, you know? And. Oh, I and thought you were going to say he got it for a song, you know, and he was so. No, no. no she's no. telling us, she or he's telling us. And, you well, know, they get very insulted. So, it, and once again, to your listing agent, as Bruce and Janine know, the way that you, the language that you use to make them understand, we love your couch. We love all your antique furniture that you picked up along the way that has that so much huge meaning. bottle collection that you have in the living room, you know? We love it, but it's going to be in the Beautiful. back of my pickup, driven away and held for your next home. <laughs> We're talking yes. about the, the Darien real estate market. I don't want to eat up the entire, um, all the billable hours of our, our three guests today. Janine Tinkin, Bruce Baker, and Kate Bates, uh, three of the hottest real estate agents in Darien. Okay, we're talking Jim, about I have to stop you. No one well, has ever, going, no one has ever, <laughs> ever called me hot. Okay. It's I just like, did, Bruce. So you can quote me. As appearing on TV 79. Declaring you the hottest agent, one of the hottest All agents right. in town. A uh, <laughs> couple of you have mentioned MLS. What is MLS? That's our Janine. multiple listing that's service. Janine. That's Janine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the multiple listing service. And we have the smart MLS, which is really where most of our inventory is listed and in Fairfield County. Um, that's where Zillow pulls it. And a lot of our buyers, I'm sh as I'm sure Bruce and Kate will tell you, everybody starts somewhere. Zillow seems to be where they start. And that, so you want to make sure that your listing's on the smart MLS. Um, different, um, we, we also have a Darien MLS um, that we also belong to. And that that's very important because it really, um, over the years, you know, really, impacts us, our MLS and our Darien board and talks about everything Darien, like the, the developers that we all went to last week and listened to. A really important factor for us to be knowledgeable about the town that we're selling it. Um, hey, but if, if, if I hire you, Kate, as my listing agent to sell my house, uh, yeah. you get an exclusive on that. Are you automatically going to put it on that multiple listing service? Or are you going to show it just to your potential buyers for some period of time? Yeah, well, Kate, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, Kate, what well, are you doing? You what we're gonna do. <laughs> I think I'm going to do the same thing that Bruce and Janine are going to do. <laughs> we're going to decide what's best for the client. Client right. comes first, number one, always. If I'm not the right agent for the client, I will find another agent. But 
if they need a nice, quiet, simple sale because they have some drama in their life or they're very uncomfortable with people coming into their home, then we can try to do an exclusive and we could just kind of bring people in a little bit at a time in a very um, kind way. But in the market that we're in right now, we you are not using an agent that isn't part of this uh, smart MLS and the Darien board. The Darien. You have to be both because eyes and optics are everything. And the more people who see that house, that's going to drive up the price. We have obviously pent up demand. So we will have a line around the block. Not everybody wants that. Most do. And I would advise always doing that. But we can always take a step back pull it in and do what our client needs. Bruce at the frenzy uh, of, of, of buying that happened after COVID uh, with the, you know, so many offers and, and bids higher than the asking price. Um, anecdotally, I heard that some people were told if you want it, it's yours, but you got to do it now. No building inspection. Um, now from the buyer's side, that sounds a little scary, but from the seller's side, uh, knowing that a building inspection could make or break a deal, should I get my own building inspection to, to see what the, the potential buyer's engineering report might show up and that's deal with great, it in advance? That's a great question. Cause it takes, it makes you feel better that you know what you got and, you know, and, and you're prepared if, if you, that contingency, you're considering letting that contingency go because it's really tough with the buyers. What I found, and, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a risk, you know, because how bad do you want the house? These are the options. Um, to a seller, that's a very important contingency to let go because he knows that, um, you know, it's if everything else works out, there's no, there's no caveats. But I have found that and I'm not recommending it, but I have found that we live in a town where most people take pretty good care of their houses and you want to, you want to, and, and you can tell, you know, it's like, if you're in the shoe business, you go in a stock room, you can tell, is it, this is a well-run business or not a well-run business, right? You can tell the same thing. We feel that when we walk into a house, it's a, it's a sense that we have. And so, yeah, you, but that's a great suggestion. Is, Have any we, of you we, ever turned down a client who yes. wanted to sell? Yes. yes. What, what, what would make you <laughs> run away from a client? When no, they're just, unrealistic on a price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you just my, know that it won't sell there. My wife has a very good, you know, she says, uh, you know, because there's, there's, there's no matter how much support we have and we all have, you know, our business at a stage where we have great access to support. Um, but she says, Bruce, remember you, you may have a lot of tenacity, but you only have so much capacity. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. She well, that reminds, I'm just going to ask, I mean, if, if <laughs> how do I know if I hire you as my, my selling agent, that I'm getting your undivided attention, that you're not running around showing three or four other properties at a higher sale price because you're going to make more commission and I'm a little bit lower on the, the pricing scale. So I don't feel you're quite as motivated to sell my property. We have to feel good about what we do. We, mm -hmm. we make a commitment to people, you know, and it's a small town. So if, 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 if I think you're looking at three agents here that probably 80% of their business is in this town. Okay. Yes, and absolutely. because that's what we focus on. All right. So, you know, you need to communicate number one. And again, they need to look, they know you have other business, but you, but if you, I think any of us would wake up in the middle of the night and feel like, okay, I can't take this listing because I've, I've got too much on my plate or this, this isn't going to be, you know, I, I, we have to, our, what drives us is to do a job at a certain level. That's, that's the bonus. Yeah. The money is good and all that stuff, but you got to feel good about what you do and you got to have a character that allows you to, you know, to do that because we spend a lot of time at this, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. And remember I, our, our, <laughs> is, is, our business is based on referrals. So yeah. 
if you're in a tiny town of 20,000 people and you're basically selling Darien and you don't do the right. First of all, I think we all have hearts where we, we are so invested in our buyers and our sellers. Like we probably don't sleep when we have listings because we really want to do the best job. And that's probably why we all do well. Um, but, uh, but you know, on the business side of things, we're referral driven. Every single one of my clients was a referral or a repeat client. Um, that's just the way it is. So I don't think that's something that a client, if, if they hire the right um, agent should ever really have to worry about. Are you going to put an ad in the New York times for my property? Get all those rich New uh, Yorkers you, that want to come up to the yeah. birds. For you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> full page. Full page ad. Yep. Like a starter well, house need, in Darien. Well, you need right? to educate people about, you know, is that possible? Of course it is. Do we? Yes. All of us have. All of we us do, do. You know, but you, you got to, you want to look what, you know, what makes the most sense. Um, is that going to get you the best bang for your buck? Or, you know, you really need to have those conversations. Marketing is everything. You know, and and because as Kate said, it's eyeballs on it, and then the product has to live up to the pictures. <laughs> Janine, you know? you, I think Janine mentioned a, a four million dollar plus house, and and that sounds like it's up in the North Country. Uh, you know, uh, n- not close to the downtown or the railroad tracks. But what's the hottest part of the market right now? Is it starter houses? Is it two million? Is it the four million, and what's I would what's say one to demand? three million. If I'm and I'd correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think between one and three million, those or three and a half million, those houses are coming on, and there's there's a big buyer pool for that price point. When you get to the over four, the buyer pool is a little smaller, but we're getting a lot of activity. And I think that's also people that would like to trade up. And that's usually not a first time homeowner, a $4 million house, first time buyer. So they either A, want to get their house sold on the market and sold, and then they may trade up. So I think there's, it's that lags, that part of the market lags a little bit compared to one, one to three and a half. Let me give you, let me give, let me give you a few, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate this. So I kind of anticipated this when I was, prepping for this so he's done his I also he's got the statistics everybody oh he's got it learn from well the I don't want to I don't want to have people think that we're all about four million dollar houses you know yeah. you know we're not but there's an interesting caveat to that too between for the past 365 days right up to today okay there 14 percent of the business of the units sold has been between zero and one million dollars so that's a good amount of houses right that's not that's so they're there right um, 17% of the business has been between one and one five. So 17 and 14, and then 3% of the business has been between one five and two. So 14, 17, and three is 34% of our unit sales are up to $2 million. So that's, you know, and I think our average price is still around one. Now it's probably one nine, one eight and a half or whatever it used to be one six. So things have pushed up. Between two and two five is to Janine's point is twenty percent of the business. Yeah, that's a lot of money, right? Twenty percent of the business between two five and three eight percent. So yeah. that's twenty eight percent. And then as you keep ticking up to to what was said, between three and four, you know, is you know it starts it starts dwindling down, you know, as as you go. Um, but I wanted to share that before COVID because this has been fascinating for me. Um, if we sold four houses, not us individually, the whole town, all the agents mm-hmm. sold three or four houses over $4 million, the whole town, that was like a good year, right? I mean, that, that yeah. was like, yeah, sure. now there's like, I think the it's like 17, you know, last year and 16 the year before. So there is definitely... You know, that higher end consumer, which helps everybody, right? Um, th- things of, are adjusting, you know, to that, which is fascinating. We got to wrap it up and let you guys get back out uh, in, in no, this beautiful not. You spring just weather. Get back to work. No, We're no, no. I just, you- uh, I'm having fun too, but we could probably talk about this forever. But I know you have, 
you have listings to get and showings to do and staging to arrange, et cetera, et cetera. Toilets so, to clean. Uh, toilets <laughs> to clean. Uh, Bruce Sorry, Baker, Bruce. Uh, Bruce Baker right. with like uh, William Pitt Sotheby, uh, Kate Bates, who comes from Compass CT, and Janine Tinkin from Houlihan Lawrence. Uh, I want to thank all three of you for uh, being on the program today and sharing your many years of uh, real estate expertise. Thanks for inviting thank us, Jim. Thank you for having us, Jim. It was great. Thank you, Jim. Fantastic. Right. Absolutely. Thank you Have again a good day. so much. And right, you, our, our faithful viewers, thank you for watching another edition of Community Matters.